Number 72. Gauge pressure in the fluid surrounding an infant's brain may rise as high as 85 millimeters of mercury. 5 to 12 millimeters of mercury is normal, creating an outward force large enough to make the skull grow abnormally large. Letter A. Calculate this outward force in newtons on each side of an infant's skull if the effective area on each side is 70 square centimeters. All right, uh, so here's our little picture, right? Um, we have the, the skull of the infant. Uh, here's, the, here's the brain. And surrounding the brain right there is fluid. Now, uh, this particular fluid exerts pressure, right, in all directions, okay? Um, so it will exert pressure on the brain. It will also exert pressure on the skull. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, how in the world does the skull grow abnormally large um, right, you might be thinking, well, the skull's pretty hard. Wouldn't it just be compressing the brain? Well, we have to remember in an infant, right, the, the bones of the skull are not fused yet. So it, it has some pliability. That's why you have to be very careful with an infant's head. So what'll happen here inside of this cavity, right, there's pressure being pushed on the brain. There's also pressure being pushed on the skull. And the skull is allowed to expand because there's going to be some breaks in the skull, right? It's pliable at this stage of life. Later on, it will flu uh, it will fuse. And then if the pressure goes up in here, then you got some problems because now it pushes solely, well, it pushes on the skull too, but the skull is not going anywhere. Your brain will be the only thing that will be compressed because the skull cannot expand anymore. Anyway, um, so what we need to do in order to find an answer for this is going to be to try to relate. I mean, to answer the question is very simple. You know, we got to relate pressure, force, and area. So we're going to use this equation on the right-hand side. It tells us that the pressure on a particular area is going to be equal to the force applied divided by the area over which that force is applied. So to solve force here, all we need to do is do a cross multiplication. So it's pressure times area. And this is the formula, right? Now, if I need to find force in newtons, you better be using standard units here for pressure and area, all right? So the standard units for pressure, right? Pascal, standard units for area, meter squared. So what I need to do then is I need to take the information in the problem, 85 millimeters of mercury, convert that into Pascal. So 85 millimeters of mercury, you may know a different conversion factor than this, and that's fine, uh, but this is the one I know, and we should be approximately getting the same answer. So this is 760 millimeters of mercury for every one atmosphere, basically, right? And then we know the relationship between Pascal and atmosphere. It's about 1.013 or so times 10 to the fifth Pascals. So if, if this equals one atmosphere and this equals one atmosphere, then these two equal one another. All right, that's basically it. Millimeters of mercury go bye-bye and that would be the calculation. Now to do then the area, they told us it's 70 squared centimeters. So centimeters on the bottom, meters on the top, 100 centimeters for every meter. You got to square this result. Please don't forget that. Why? Because you got two centimeters over here. You got centimeter times centimeter. If you don't square this thing, then you only have one centimeter. You need two of them. So you got to square the whole thing. You can't just square the bottom. That would be incorrect. You got to square the whole thing. All right. Now, in terms of the math, if you just squared the bottom, it would be fine because one squared is just one. But please don't do that. You got to square the whole conversion factor. Anyway, centimeters go by by then. Now we can just plug all uh, everything on in, right? So now I'm just going to plug in the values. So the pressure here was going to be 85.0 times 1.013. Make that a little neater. 1.013 times 10 to the fifth Pascal, all divided by 760. Great. And then multiplied now by the area, which is 70.0, all over 100 squared. Okay, I can write in then the times 1 squared up here. Actually, you know what, let me just do that for completeness sake. Times 1 squared, obviously, that's just 1. Take out the calculator, plug it on in. So 85 times 1.013 times 10 to the 5th, divided by 760. Take that result and multiply it now by 70, divided by 100 squared, essentially. And we get a value of about 79.3, right? So 79.3 uh, newtons, right? So that will be the outward force on each side of the uh, brain, okay? All right, let's take a look at letter B. Uh, letter B says, what is the net force acting on the skull? What? Um, 
yeah, this question's, uh, huh? <laughs> this question's interesting. Um, honestly, I don't. So to answer, to answer this question, we have to make some assumptions here. Uh, we're either going to be, hmm. So assuming the skull is pliable, which it is for an infant, okay, and the skull is growing abnormally large, right? To find then the net force acting on the skull here, um, it's going to be changing, right, over time, okay? Uh, why? Because over time, the pressure, the pressure will be changing, right? As the skull is expanding, the reason why the skull is expanding is to alleviate the pressure. So as the pressure is changing, the area of the skull won't change significantly. So it's really the force of the fluid on the skull that will be changing. So the question, so then the question becomes, you know, what point do they want us to find this net force? I, I honestly don't know, right? It, it just says, what's the net force? That's it. So there's a few ways that we can look at this. Remember that inside of, remember that they told us the gauge pressure, okay, inside of the skull. So the gauge pressure is, um, the gauge pressure is net of the external environment. So what I mean by that is right on the skull, there's a certain atmospheric pressure here, okay? And right on each side of the skull, right? And if they tell us the gauge pressure inside, what they're telling us is the pressure of this fluid in excess of the atmospheric pressure. So basically this gauge pressure that they told us of the 85 millimeters of mercury um, is the excess amount of pressure inside the skull there over right, uh, the atmospheric pressure. So that being the case, if they want us to just find the net force at the beginning, I mean, this is the answer. Um, if they want us to find, then as the skull is expanding, right, the pressure is going to be reduced in there so that, um, so that it can alleviate the uh, force, right? Now, as you might think about this, then what's going to happen? And you might be saying, well, how is the pressure? How did the pressure go up anyway? Well, most, not most likely, but the only real way it can happen there, uh, here's the brain, right? The skull is in red. The only way that this can happen is that if the fluid between the brain and the skull has gone up, somehow this fluid value has increased, right? So now let's say the brain has, in, has uh, excuse me, the skull has expanded and uh, the skull has expanded as far as it will go, and now it's being now it's balanced. So now there is no more expansion happening here uh, for the skull. If this is the part that they want us to find the net force acting on the skull, right? When the skull has now expanded fully to accommodate the increased amount of pressure, then the net force will be zero. All right, because there is no more movement of the skull outward, right? So um, if the pressure then, excuse me, if the force inside is pushing out, and the force outside, meaning due to the atmosphere, is pushing in. If these two forces are balanced, the skull goes nowhere. So at that particular point, when the skull is not moving at all, and it has fully expanded, the net force is zero. So again, I don't know which case they're talking about. It just says, what is the net force acting on the skull? I don't know at what point. Um, so, you know, choose whichever answer you think should be right. I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, they're, they're both right, given the assumptions. So... Yeah. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, hit the like button if it helped, and we'll see you next time. Take care.